it's the last one. Just a little further. Will you lend me a hand? There's still injured in the bar. <laughs> you held your own out there. The battle is over. How long must I hold it? to worry any longer.
Give me that sword, boy. Yes. I'm getting tired of these things.
Clive. Find purse weighing you down. It's rubbing me blind, you know. <laughs> Back door. To what do I owe the honor? Come on, buddy, you know what I want. The same for you, do you? Yes. Oof. She looks so pretty. No scratches, right? Yeah. Good, good. That it? Guys, look at this. Woo! Got her damn old dung. I got her. Oh, 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 yes. I'm nervous. Well met, Sid. This is the initiate. Ember, present yourself. At your service, Master. Please, just Sid. There are no masters here. Your life is your own. Oh, of course. Thank you, Sid. The sergeant says you'll be evaluating me at my trial. To become a scout, yes. You are aware of the dangers inherent in that role. I am. But I swore I'd face him. Just like the man who saved my life. And who would that be? Gav. It was him who found me and freed me. <laughs> no magic, no support, just one man and his nose. Came and sniffed me out. It taught me what one man can do if he puts his mind to it. And I've been training ever since, so that one day... I can be someone's saviour, just like Gav was mine. <laughs> I'm sure he'd be flattered. You clearly have good intentions, Ember. And it sounds like you're under no illusions. Stick to this path and you'll make a fine curse breaker. So, what? Have I passed? <sighs> you haven't even started yet. <laughs> now listen. Not far from here is an Imperial lookout, East Watch. The guards there record all their sightings in a logbook. You are to find it and bring it here. And bring it here, right. Anything else? No. Sneaking into a heavily guarded Imperial outpost and stealing the logbook would be quite sufficient. You'll need to assess the situation, determine a point of entry, create a distraction and effect an escape all without being discovered and thrown into an Imperial oubliette. Ember, Gav isn't our best scout because he can do everything. It's essential that you know your limits. Know my limits, right. I won't let you down. A 
It shouldn't be as dangerous as I made out. But keep a weather eye on him all the same, would you? On my way. All right, Ember. Impress me. through me. Joshua. Ember, are you? <laughs> you dead? Gone. Of course. <laughs> Scouts really are a rare breed. <sighs> Back to Northreach it is then. What am I saying? <laughs> Expect you back so soon? Where is Ember? How did he fare? I <laughs> thought I'd find him with you. He must have fled. I followed him to Eastwatch, where I found him being set upon by a wild Avis. He was just standing there. Didn't even draw his sword. <laughs> I had to step in and take care of things. By the time I had, he was nowhere to be seen. I assumed he'd set off in your direction, but... Apparently not. Well, I'm sorry, Sid. I knew the boy had a nervous streak, but he seemed like... The right man for the job? <laughs> I believe this is the logbook you tasked me with retrieving. Hey? How did you... Don't you tell me you breached the tower while Sid was busy saving your skin. <laughs> what? Wasn't that what you asked me to do? To bring the thing back without getting caught? He has you then, as heir. And he did it all on his own. But Sid, he... He did what he thought was best. 
And now I have to decide whether I agree. Of course. We'll await your evaluation back at the hideaway. Don't you leave my sight. <laughs> yes, Sergeant. This won't be an easy decision. Said they take another hundred. And now my eye out the garrison today. I haven't seen any of those beastly. Be careful. I will. Ready, go. Okay. Take the shit out of this guy. <laughs> Bitch, get out the way! <laughs> Splendid heart. Kill! 
Two more hunts left. I think that's it. Hmm. Yeah, it's a behemoth, right? The last one. I believe so. Yeah, behemoth king. Oh god. I don't want to face that one yet.
game over. One more to go. Rest in peace. So be quick about it. You'll not find a better price than that. Should have seen him. The thing didn't stand a chance. Welcome back, Sid. Welcome back, Sid. Yes. Welcome back. Sure, it wasn't too much of a pain in the ass, I am. Truth be told, it was me who suggested roping you in to help with the trial. But from what I hear, things didn't go quite as planned. <laughs> no, they most certainly did not. Faced with an unexpected foe, Ember froze. He did not run. He did not fight. 
Had I not been there, he would be dead. It would be too great a risk to send him out on a mission alone. Thank you, Sid, for your honest appraisal. Ember, you braved the tower and emerged unscathed. Yes, but only because Sid saved your skin. To me, that's no better than being caught red-handed. You failed the test. Wait, Sergeant. Ember still has much to learn, it's true. And this time he was found wanting. But I'd say he's due a second chance, nonetheless. After all, he did do as you asked. With a bit of hard work, any hand can be made to hold a blade. And any mind can conquer his fears. But a scout's nose is different. You've either got one, or you ain't. And by sniffing out that lot, young Ember here has shown he has a conch and an half. Wouldn't do to waste it now, would it? Fine. One more chance. I'll do whatever you ask. I'll spend my days and nights in the pit if I have to. I'll show you. Just you wait. Daft as a brush there, huh? But his heart's in the right place. Just like someone else we know. And if you ask me, We'll be leaning on him for far too long. That time the curse breakers took some of the weight off his shoulders, I reckon. Good night. Just don't tell Gav I said so, will ya? I won't have him thinking he's been hard done by. <laughs> Next thing you know, he'll be asking for a day off. <laughs> <sighs> Chance would be a fine thing. Back to work. Forgive me, Sid. This did not play out as I expected. <laughs> Things rarely do these days. But that's why we need men like Ember more than ever. Men who can make the best out of a bad situation. Remember that. I will, Sid. Thank you. Right? About that. Oi! Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> so 
Something troubling you? Uh, no more than usual. It's just... Edda's baby will be coming soon, and I wanted to make something for it. I'm sure she'd like that. Back in the north, families would always make gifts when a bairn was on the way. Yeah, I let the little tykes know they were welcome in their new homes, like. So, what's the problem? Well, the problem is that Edda's due any day now. I don't know if I'll be ready in time. Is there anything I can do to help? Hmm. You know, there just might be. All right, then. What exactly are we making? A good luck charm. But not just any good luck charm. Not just any. No. One made from the feather of a silver chocobo. <laughs> There's no luck in all the realm, or so we used to say back home anyway. Thing is, uh, they're hard to come by. Had Otto and Karen check with their suppliers, but nothing. Ambrosia. Try and track one down myself, only... Only the big day is fast approaching. And that's all you need. A feather. That or the bird whose arse it's attached to, aye. I was gonna start by asking around with travelling traders plying the northern borders. Well, there's no shortage of those passing through Martha's. I think I might make that my first port of call. I'll let you know if I find anything. You're a good friend, Clive. I won't forget this. Side quest, Batman. Behemoth King time. regret this.
Victory too. Yeah. Hunted the hunted. Check. No match for you, I told God. <laughs> Who is a good boy? This one will figure out what's going on with Torgal. Twice over. Purple flower 
was blooming next to a waterfall. Shouldn't be too hard to find. I suppose. Okay. We are done with the Kingdom of Bulud, I think. Yep. Turtle. It's still here. After all these years. Not smaller than I remember. And you're a lot bigger. <laughs> you might have to swim, boy. <laughs> Wasn't being serious. Joshua. You two go on without me. Uh -huh. I doubt that boat will hold a third. <laughs> if you're sure, we won't be long. Hop in, boy. right through those trees. Come on. Mm -hmm. It's like a secret location. Race you there. I bet I could still beat you. so little <laughs> coming here helped me to forget who I was or wasn't mm. Prince Shield son his mother could love had I been any one of those things 
Perhaps. <laughs> what is it, boy? This is all from the castle. And Phoenix Gate. Did you bring these here? Take this with us, shall we? So I don't forget either. Hmm. Is there more? That's not the way back to the boat, Toggle. Beautiful. <laughs> People always talk about the importance of putting the past behind you. But without it, we wouldn't be who we are today. And we certainly couldn't steer our way to a better tomorrow. Come on, Togo. Let's go home. That was nice. Oh, I really want a dog now. Damn it. <laughs> Sorry for the wait. We're ready. So well, after what happened here, it's a miracle there was any left at all.
should be enough. Let's hope one of the merchants here has what Gav needs. Excuse me. I'm looking for something. Oh, well, then I'm your man. <laughs> A silver chocobo feather. Oh, or maybe not. <laughs> Though you're not the first to mention the bird around here. There was a man stopped by the rest not long ago, claiming he was attacked by a silver chocobo. Near some guide hall, not far from Eastpool. Most took him for a braggart and a liar, but who knows? Perhaps there was some truth to his tale. We'll see. Thank you. like you could do with a drink. You come back and visit, all right? Just because the heavens have gone to wreck and ruin, it doesn't mean we have to. What are you after? Pretty well. How do, traveller? You've the look of a man who could do with a new whetstone? Or perhaps a bawdy etching of the Vicerine? Uh, <laughs> maybe another time. I'm looking for a silver chocobo feather. If that's the case, Rumours are all you're likely to find. No one has seen a silver chocobo for years. Word is they were all hunted for their feathers. Some northern nonsense about bringing good luck. <laughs> Didn't bring them much, nor their bows. If any are still out there, I reckon they'll be doing their damnedest not to be discovered. You're probably right. Thank you anyway. Summit. You wouldn't happen to sell silver chocobo feathers, would you? <laughs> I deal in fruit, not fancies. But if it's fancies you're after, I suggest you try Rhiannon's ride. Was a silver chocobo seen there? Oh, yes. If you believe the ravens of a madman. It wouldn't be the first time. <laughs> a silver chocobo sighted in the hills near Rhiannon's ride. It sounds almost too good to be true, but since I'm already here... And 
these look fresh. The Chocobo was here, then recently. Perhaps it still is. before they change their minds. Hmm. Yep, yeah, his area is complete. to take the bearers son. It's Lubo. It held me back. Thanks, but I'll be traveling light. I'm almost finished already, in fact. You're really going to go through with this, then? I am. But before I go, there is one small issue I'd like your assistance with. Well, two, in fact. If it's within my power to help you, I will. the children. Mm. I refuse to let them share in my disgrace. And if I leave them here, they surely will. Our friendship would see them ostracized forever. But I can't take them with me either. I can think of only one place where they are certain to be safe and provided for and loved. The hideaway. Yes, of, of course. course. The children will be more than welcome. Thank you, Clive. I will not forget this. Lubor, are you still here? What is it, Ferda? You look pale. There's been a flood in the Velcroy, a damn big one. The League of Outlaws encampment was completely submerged in Ether. What? Every last one of the bastards has turned, and they're headed this way. Bandits are one thing, but Akashic bandits are quite another. The town guard won't stand a chance against them. We need to evacuate. There's no time to lose. Further, gather the men. The Akashic may strike at any moment. We must make ready to cover the townspeople's escape. Well, what are you waiting for? Yes, my lord. Clive, change of plan. The children stay with me for now. I need you to find Conrad and Natalie. 
Tell them to prepare for a full and immediate evacuation. Understood. I'll do what I can to convince everyone else. Wish me luck. What's in a you cat? have to listen to me. They're coming. You Why need to do they always have to make such a muck? <gasps> It's you. What do you want, Lord Underhill? To pass on an important message. There's been an ether flood out in the Velcroy. The camp where the so-called League of Outlaws were gathering has been swallowed. They're no longer just bandits. They're Akashic now. And they could be here at any moment. You need to begin preparing for a full-scale evacuation right away. Oh, do we? Hmm. And who was it who gave you this disturbing news, might I ask? Lubo, or perhaps the man spreading the same poison out in the square as we speak. You may believe his lies, my lord, but we know better. But why would he lie about something like this? Some twisted attempt at revenge, perhaps. If he had not been unmasked, he may well have been elected our leader. A great honor for one of his kind. One he might well feel aggrieved at having been denied. Lord Underhill, forgive me, <laughs> Underhill. but it has become all too evident where your sympathies lie. Lubor cannot be trusted, and neither, therefore, can you. You may not trust me, but for the sake of your people, ask yourselves if there is any chance that this is true. There isn't. You can be certain of that. Now be off with you. You're making a mistake. Archive. If our words will not move them, then we must find another way to help save the town. You're right. Let's speak to Lord Ferda. Such a bus outside. It's driving away our customers. I think we'd better shut up. What's Lubon raving about now? Further. Sid, what's wrong? I went to warn Conrad and Natalie about the Akashic, but they wouldn't listen. They've convinced themselves that nothing Lubor says can be trusted. The bloody fools. Which means the town guard can't be counted on for support. But I can. If there's anything I can do to help you defend Dalamil, you only have to ask. I appreciate it. Sid, further! I've been looking for you everywhere. Victor, I thought you'd left. I couldn't abandon a friend in need. And Blue Boy is in need at this very moment. Come quickly. You have to believe me. The Akashic are coming. They don't eat, they don't sleep, they don't tire, and they don't care who they kill. They're unlike anything that's come before. There will be no parley, no mercy granted! We may have saved the town once, but this is different. I do not ask that you forgive me, but please believe me. If you do not run, you will die. You will all fucking die! <laughs> You'd like that, wouldn't you, Bearer? Mm. Yeah, with us out of the way, your kind will be free to claim Dalamil for yourselves. It's you who should run! <laughs> Run, Bearer! Yeah, run! Run! Far, far away! Just go on, Bearer! 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 Just go
wait. Someone's coming. Oh, the kids. Stop! You're hurting him! <laughs> what did Lubor ever do to you? Hmm? He solves all your stupid problems and he keeps all of you safe. You know there's nothing he wouldn't do for this town. Who was it who made that cleaver you use every day, Conrad? And what about your counting table, Natalie? Who fixed that? Whose men make sure the streets are clean so all your boots don't get dirty? Who spends all day every day making sure things run smoothly around here? And none of you ever say thank you, ever! But did Lubor ever complain? Well, does he ever stop smiling? He keeps this whole place going! And you act like it doesn't even exist! Lubor, we have heard enough. Wait! We will not run. The town guard will not abandon the very place it is sworn to protect. And I will not give up for lost the stores that we labored so hard to fill. So tell us, how do you propose we deal with these Akashic of yours? We won't run, but we will fight. All right then. <laughs> if you don't want to die. Oh. Allow me to explain the situation. The ether flood occurred near the village of Cheratina, deep in the Velcroy. The place had been abandoned for years, until the League of Outlaws decided to make it their base of operations. Now they're all turned, and if the scouts' reports are correct, heading in this direction. They are mindless monsters, driven only by hate and rage. And they are utterly unpredictable. With the bandits, we at least knew how and where they were likely to attack. When these creatures come, Delamil will have the bitterest fight it has ever faced on its hands. The town guard will muster at the north gate. The rest of us will take the south. Both forces will provide men to serve as scouts and messengers, ready to spread word of the size and nature of the Akashic force as soon as it is spotted. And as soon as it has been, we will converge on its position and see that it is driven back from Delamil at all costs. Conrad. Can I count on the support of the town guard? Always. I leave the selection and coordination of the messengers in your hands, Victor. And the command of our men in yours, Ferda. If you would both be so kind, consider it done. As you wish. Natalie, I would ask that you and your people have the townsfolk barricade themselves inside the bathhouse. And tell the mer and not to waste time securing anything beside the essentials. Preserving life is our one and only concern. As long as we survive, it doesn't matter what trinkets we might lose. Our riches can be regained. And if anyone doubts that, let it be known that the Briar's Kiss stands ready to cover any losses. 
Very well. I shall tell them. Where do I fit into this plan? Where else but the most perilous place of all? I would like you to travel to the home of our erstwhile League of Outlaws, Cheratina itself. The main host is most likely still there, and Dalamil will not be safe until it is eradicated root and branch. A little gardening. How pleasant. I doubt it. I have a feeling these weeds will be particularly stubborn. Luckily, so am I. So you are. All right, then. We all know what we have to do. Now it's simply a matter of doing it. For Dalimil. Looks like everyone's ready. I'd better not keep them waiting. is disbanded. I should get back to Dalamil and see how the others fared. All the Akashic we were able to find have been dealt with. Seems that might be the last of them. Last of them here, perhaps. Lubo, Sir Clive has returned. Clive! What news from Cheritina? It's done. Root and branch. I knew you wouldn't let me down. Thank you, my lord. 
Friends, the Horde has been driven back. The Akashic have been defeated. And we need not fear the arrival of any more, thanks to Clive. Victory is ours. We bloody did it. We saved Dalamil. Lubor, allow me to apologize. After all you have done for this town, we should never have doubted you. But we did, and for that we are truly sorry. We only hope that you can forgive us. We need you, Lubor. Dalimil needs you. So, if you would still like to be considered for the position of mayor, you have our backing. Hmm. You do remember that I'm a bearer, don't you? We do. But that is not a stain on your character. It is a stain on ours. We thought only of what we perceived bearers to be, not what you truly are. The man who saved Dalimil twice over. I see. But... I will only accept your proposal on two conditions. Name them. Firstly, that you will both do everything in your power to rally your people to my cause. If the Town Guard and the Merchants League do not accept my leadership, it will be doomed from the start. Unity is the key to defending Dalamil. And I do not doubt that we shall need to call on our combined strength again. When that time comes, I will expect us all to pull together. Just as we did today. Of course. You have our word. And secondly... You will accept that if I am to lead you, the mistreatment of bearers must end here in Dalamil. Any bearer within our walls shall be afforded the same rights as any other citizen. They will not be judged by what they are, but who they are. As we failed to do, and came so close to losing everything. We agree to your conditions. And we have only one in return. That you continue to work for the good of Dalimil. As you always have. Condition accepted. Well then, it seems my mayorship is all but confirmed. Do I get some sort of special hat? Fickle fate can be. Not so long ago, I had resigned myself to leaving Dalamil in disgrace. And now, I find myself her leader. Here. For everything. Lubo. About the children. Fear not. You are, of course, relieved of your responsibility. I would sooner face another horde of Akashic than see them brought up as outlaws. I'll make sure they're safe here. I don't doubt that you will. And not just the children, but everyone in Dalamel. I'll do my best. Can't have all your hard work going to waste.
Ready, go. There we are again. Carava. If you were a tortoise, Togo, where would you hide? Hmm, found it. You deserve a rest. It looks like we found him. Ugh. Materials to mid so she can finish her prototype. Your journey was not overly onerous. Cyril, you found a letter from father? Yes, I have it here. If you would do us the honor, my lord. My beloved sons, I know that I asked much of you in this coming war, but as you know, the way to secure a future for our duchy and her family. Yet even should we succeed in subduing the savages and winning back Drake's breath, the threat of the blight still looms, and only with all Rosaria striving as one might, uh, we might last uh, overcome it. I have made plans to see us through, but such are the obstacles that stand in our way. I shall, shall likely fall to you to continue my work. I know that you have the strength, the courage, and the will to do so. It shall be an arduous inheritance, and so I offer you another, that you might be reminded of the love and the faith that I hold before both of you. Wow. An inheritance. It would seem the late Archduke penned this missive shortly before his passing. The day before we left for Phoenix Gate. What are these plans he spoke of? His plans for the Duchy, Your Grace. Your father entrusted them to my predecessor, the former bearer of the Burning Quill, who entrusted them in turn to me. The complete emancipation of bearers is their stated aim. But your father's dream did not end there. His grace also spoke of building hospices to care for those stricken by the curse, and the founding of a new university 
to further the development of non-magical technologies. With the blight spreading ever more widely across the twins, Archduke Elwyn saw this as the only means of securing Rosaria's survival. He wished to see men and bearers treated as equals. To see centuries of common wisdom overturned. Small wonder he did not think it achievable within his lifetime. But he thought it achievable nonetheless. Had he not, he would never have written this message. Nor would he have entrusted his vision to his most faithful aides. Those who would have stood with you, shielded you from the machinations of the less benevolent personages at court. It's a pity only they are still with us. Mm. It is true that those most loyal to your father were the first to suffer the Duchess's wrath. But one at least remains. And she has come bearing gifts. What do you mean? Mayhap it is better that she explain, my lord. After all, the duties entrusted to me by my predecessor extended only to recovering His Grace's will and arranging a meeting with the one who might execute it. Or a part of it, at least. And where is this woman? She awaits you in the archive, Your Grace. Thank you, Cyril. Hmm. Who's this? <laughs> Shall we then? Lord Marquis, if you have a moment. What is it, Cyril? One of our brethren lately journeyed across the strait in order to pursue a new avenue of inquiry in our ongoing investigation. He sent an owl some while ago, but we have heard naught from him since. Was he surveying another fallen ruin? No. The object of his study was a savior cult that has arisen in ash in recent years. We believe it may have some connection to the Circle of Malleus, an ancient religion that worshipped Ultima as its god. By gaining an understanding of this new faith, we hoped to learn more of the Circle's original beliefs. And so you sent one of your brothers to Ash, a continent teeming with orcs and Akashic. Fully cognizant of the risks, yes. I entrusted the mission to one of the most able of our order, the third chair, a master of the arts of combat and survival both. Though he has been silent for some days now, I have thus far refrained from sending any others in search of him, lest they be lost in turn. Yet, it seemed only right to inform you of the situation, given your unique experience of the perils of Ash. For as you so earnestly advised me, it would not do to abandon a man to his fate, when he might yet be saved. <sighs> it would not. But Ash is a big place. Can you be any more specific? Perhaps. The last owl I received from him mentioned a village where he had heard the cult were wont to assemble. Mickleberg was its name. It lies in the southern reaches of Walud. If aught ill befell him, I expect it did so there. Right. I'll see what I can do. You are much too kind, my lord. Go then, with my hopes, and may the Firebird's flame ever burn in your heart. If this new faith really is an offshoot of the Circle of Malleus, then... Let's concentrate on finding the third chair first, shall we?
My lord, your grace. I, I hardly recognize you. I am Goditha, retainer of House Rosfield, loyal servant to the Phoenix and his shields. Your father, the Archduke Elwyn, entrusted me with the delivery of a gift. I only hope you can forgive my tardiness in bringing it to you. Lift up your head, Lady Goditha. You have our gratitude for your service to our house and to our father. I merely did my duty, as any proud Rosarian would. My lady, perhaps you could explain a little more. What exactly is the gift you bring? As I'm sure you know, it has long been the custom for the children of House Rosfield to be presented with certain keepsakes upon their coming of age. Indeed it has. Our father often spoke of the day when our turn would come. And had he lived to see it, he would have presented you with the treasures I bear. Matching armbands for you both. Alas, he did not live. Indeed, he was taken from us even before they could be completed. He had intended to claim the heartstone with which each armband was to be finished himself, but it was not to be. And his gifts remain incomplete. You see. It saddens me to bring them before you, as they are. It was your father's wish that you be presented with the finished articles, not these works in progress, but with his grace long since gone and the stone left unclaimed, I had little choice. You are grown men now, and his house is yours. And while I would not presume to insist upon your claiming the harp stone in his stead, I know that nothing would have pleased him more than for you to do so. Thank you, Lady Goditha. What say you, Clive? What else? Of course, my lady. May our father's will be done. Oh, I am much obliged. Do you know where we might find this heartstone, my lady? I do. Though it may be a matter of a good deal more than simply happening upon it. It is found in the bellies of elder griffins, you see. We do at least know where to find one. A certain specimen has made its nest in Titan's Wake, not far from here. A certain specimen? You are most perceptive, Your Grace. In answer to your unspoken question, yes. In fact, this is the very same beast your father meant to slay. I have been tracking its movements since you were but a boy. Were you to slay it in his stead, as men of House Rosfield, it would surely make your father proud. What say you, Joshua? What else? <laughs> Let's go. Eyes peeled, Joshua. Rossfield. Uh. 
over. Is this the Heartstone? I expect Lady Godotha will know. you were safe. The griffin is slain then. And a heartstone claimed. Yes, this radiant luster, like frozen flame, it is just as your father described it. Thank you, my lord. Your grace. Your father would be so proud. Lady Godotha, the lapidary is ready. Thank you, Cyril. I will be with him shortly. If you would excuse me, I shall have the stone cut and set forthwith. The armbands are complete. Pray, take them. They are yours, after all. Heartstone is harder and more enduring than Garnet, or even Ruby. It symbolizes unwavering will and devotion. And the graven vines encircling the stone represent the unbreakable bonds between you. It's a message. Father knew we had enemies both inside and outside the duchy. Enemies who would thwart his vision. Only with unwavering devotion would it ever be realized. And only if we stood together, as Phoenix and Shield, as brothers in arms, only then might those enemies be overcome. Indeed. His Grace knew the enormity of the task he would entrust to you, his heirs. But this was more than just a message. It was a promise. That he would always be with you. Thank you, Lady Godotha. For remaining the steadfast custodian of our father's will. Forgive me, my lady, but there is something I don't quite understand. The Undying told me that after father died, mother claimed all of the ducal treasures for her own. Even if the armbands were incomplete, she would surely not have overlooked them. So, how were you able to keep them from her? Because I was the keeper of the vault. Though I was but a lowly servant, your father spoke to me of his intentions for the bands of the deep love he had for both of you, and his hopes for your future. In the days before the disaster at Phoenix Gate, I discovered that the Duchess had ordered her jewellery be sent away from the castle. It was then that I knew she meant to betray us. I tried to warn your father, but it was too late. When word of the fire reached Rosalith, I knew my time was short. So I took up the armbands and I fled into the night. And thank the Founder you did. Yet my duty to your father was incomplete. Not knowing what else to do, I followed the Griffin, thinking I might claim the Heartstone on its passing. And so my pursuit continued, until Lord Cyril appeared before me. He informed me that His Grace's will had been recovered, and that his sons were alive and well. Lady Godotha, on behalf of my father, and all the people of Rosaria, I thank you for your loyal service. As do I. Thank you, my lord. Your grace, for coming back to us. For giving my service meaning. I remain your faithful servant, my lord. suit you well. It must be gratifying to finally receive the inheritance that was denied you for so long. It is. And we thank you for the part you played, Cyril. <laughs> if you would permit me to play my part a little longer, 
Might I suggest that you make your way to your father's memorial atop Hawk's Cry Cliff? Let him see that you have received his blessing, and that his vision lives on in you. I suppose it would be churlish not to. What do you say, Clive? Shall we pay your father a visit? I think we should. I was hoping to be able to offer him my thanks before we left for Origin. Your father's helm is enshrined there. It has been since, since the day we recovered it from Phoenix Gate. I prithee claim it, for it too is a part of your inheritance, and I do not doubt that your father would prefer it in your hands than perched upon some lonely rock. Thank you, Cyril. That point. Unwavering will and an unbreakable bond. Do you really think we're strong enough? To save the world? Of course. To have overcome father's political enemies? All that I'm less certain. Especially knowing what we know now. What mother was truly capable of. But perhaps these bands would have helped. Knowing he was with us would have made all the difference. This uh Father always fought for what he believed was right. It wasn't until that night at Phoenix Gate that I realized I had never fought for anything. I always had someone else to do the fighting for me. No matter how fate conspired against him, he never lost heart, never looked back, never stopped fighting. To me, he was the greatest of men. I've been trying to live up to his ideals ever since. We all have, Clive. We all have. And we'll keep trying. Because that's what he would have wanted. <laughs> what he would have done himself. Even if it meant standing against the very gods in the heavens. 
I shall be borrowing this, Father, if I may. That you might watch over us as we follow in your footsteps. that he's with you. We won't lay you down. Onward then. Onward. To the end. And to a new beginning. Two more. Funny every time. that way. for someone. To be honest, I, I wasn't sure I'd find him here, let alone all of you. Hmm, is that so? What are you doing here? Is this where you live? It is my home. The others, they, they heeded the call. You keep saying that. What do you mean? They came here. To perform the rite, just as King Barnabas instructed. Uh oh. This village, this that altar, where 
They shall cast their souls upon the gentle waters and give themselves to the Lord. Give themselves. Oh, Lord, cleanse us of our sins. Let us be reborn in your loving arms. Free us from the torment of this mortal realm. They want to be saved. Forgive me. But did another foreigner, like me, come here? He was probably wearing a cowl. You mean the traveler from Stone? Yes. He's staying at my house. <laughs> toward the rear of the village. Thank you. If you don't mind, I'll go and greet him. They seek the same salvation Barnabas did. At least the third chair still lives. Let's go and find him. Excuse me, are you with the Undying? I am. And so it would appear, are you? Lord Rosfield, if I am not mistaken. That's right. And you must be the third chair. I am. Cyril was worried for your safety. He sent me to find you. And I must apologize. I did not mean to trouble the bearer of the burning quill, much less you, my Lord Marquis. He said that you had failed to report. Is there a reason for that? I came here to study the followers of this new faith. But the more I learned of them, the more my own faith began to falter. You have seen them at their prayers, have you not? devote themselves to the veneration of their lord with a fervor I have never seen before. Praying night and day that they might be rid of their wicked wills and reborn in their savior's light. Not that they might be granted respite from their worldly woes, but so that they might continue to serve him. Serve him with all of their beings. I, too, swore to devote my life to the service of my lord and master, but this... It is different. It is more. And so I would see it through to the end. See these people safe, that they might achieve their dream. That they might do their duty to their lord even if it should keep me from doing my duty to mine. You do understand what their dream is, don't you? I do, my lord. They would cast aside their wills and become a Kashyyyk. I know that it may be hard to believe, but to these people, that is the very essence of salvation. I don't know about that. Forgive me, <laughs> my lord. But I must remain here. If you are to return to Master Cyril, I would consider it a great... Uh oh Did you hear that, my lord? Something is happening. I'll go and find out what. Stay here. Maybe it's the salvation. Ready. 
Of course, it's an atlas. Son of a gun. We meet again. <laughs> being an undying. <laughs> Looks <laughs> like one of the weakest kills I've ever seen. You die. <laughs> Come on, speak to me. I had to save them. That they might have a chance to find true salvation. By devoting themselves to the service of their lord. Just as I did. When the Undying plucked me from the gutter. And gave me a cause to believe in. A duty. To serve. Was everything to me. And I would not deny them that fulfillment. Even if they must become a Kashik in order to achieve it. Forgive me, my Lord Marquis. I did not mean to trouble you with this. My findings. Could you deliver them to Master Cyril for me? Of course. Your duty will be done. Look, my lord, they are saved. Oh, 
is. They just look like zombies to me. <laughs> Blue zombies. Third chair, Cyril. He bade me deliver his findings to you. Thank you, my lord. He remained in Ash. He died protecting the villagers from an echo. I buried him in Mickleburg. I'm sorry that I couldn't save him. If you could not save him, no one could. The villagers, they were. Believers in this savior cult. They prayed to their god that they might be unburdened of their wills. Then an ether flood came. And their wish was granted. Your brother sacrificed himself that they might live. Even knowing that that life... was death by another name. Then he perished defending liberty. A hero's end. For the right to choose how one dies is no less sacred than the right to choose how one lives. <laughs> Sid would agree. He wanted to build a world where people could die on their own terms. A noble ambition. To die for one's cause is the most perfect expression of one's faith. It matters not how misguided others might judge one's decision to be. Only that the decision is one's own. We live according to the teachings of our order. We believe in them. We protect them. And yes, we die for them. For better or worse, that is our creed. But he didn't die for your creed. He died to save them. And you still believe that what he did was right? I believe... that he believed it was. We of the Undying are not slaves, but willing servants. And this was his will. The ultimate expression of it. <sighs> All right. I'd like to know this man's name, Cyril. To know the names of all the undying who've fallen in the line of duty. They died serving my house. It's only right that I remember them. That is my duty. Of course. I shall fetch the Book of Martyrs at once. My lord, it has been, and shall ever be, the greatest honor of my life to serve House Rosfield. Though our duties may differ, yours is no less important. I pray with all my heart for your success. And were they here, I have no doubt but that every one of my fallen brothers and sisters would feel the same. I just got one left before I head back to the hideaway.
Welcome, welcome. Of course. Uncle Byron run our way. Hey, Eloise. Good day, Clive. When we fled our childhood home. Loved him. Did I tell you that was what he wanted? No matter how hard it might be, the Dominion has fallen. The Crimson Caravans must set an example. It is our job to keep the hope alive. Come back soon, won't you? See that too. Papa. What is it? Please, just make it stop. I'm scared. Yeah, it's even more visible from here. It's gonna come to this. Well, just from looking at it, it's enough to send the sugar down the spine. Mm. Coats and cowards, the lot of you! If it's a fight you want, it's a fight you shall have! Allow me. Hmm. I don't need your. Please, uh, Field Marshal, oblige you. This won't take long. You're right. It won't. <laughs> Men. Finish him.
little longer than I'd have liked. Field Marshal Havel, I presume. Are either of you injured? No, my lord. You arrived just as our escort turned on us. Fucking traitors. I'd heard reports of soldiers in the outlying regions abandoning the oaths they swore. But I hadn't thought the corruption had reached so close to the heart of the Republic. It's a fucking disgrace. Your interfering old bastard of an uncle tried to warn me, of course. My Lord Marquis, or is Sid the outlaw more to your liking? <laughs> Call me what you want. It doesn't change who I am, or the urgency of the message I bring. My uncle has a plan to right the realm, and he needs your help to see it through. Before I agree to anything, I'd have you answer one question. What do you stand to gain from all this? I won't deny that I might benefit from further chaos. But I seek a new beginning for all of us. And while the choices I've made may not always have been the right ones, I know I made them for the right reasons. For so long, so many of us have been told how we could live, how we could die, when it should have been our decision all along. Now we have a chance to put things right. But in order to take it, we must stand together, even if it be beside those with whom we don't see eye to eye. Certainly not the words I expected from an outlaw, but perhaps your uncle was right. You are no ordinary outlaw. I'll never hear the end of this. All right. I'll start by ordering my most trusted guard to bring the Dalmechian fringes under control. Next, I'll make contact with my counterparts in the Imperial Army and see if I can't convince them to try and restore order in their own territory. Thank you, Field Marshal. But they are not the only ones we will need to convince. What do you mean? I don't doubt that I can bully some sense into a few generals. But those they answer to require a different kind of persuasion. And when it comes to honeyed words... Uh, we will need an envoy. One who can court even the most stubborn of statesmen. You, perhaps. I'm flattered. But I'm no diplomat either. And I have other problems to attend to. What we need is a skilled arbitrator. And I may know just the person. Is that so? <laughs> Uncle. And would he happen to be an outlaw too? Of a different kind, perhaps. Well, beggars can't be choosers. <laughs> I suppose we'll all have to find a little of the outlaw on ourselves if we're to make it through this. Very well. Send your man to me right away. I shall. My lord, Marquis. Your lord uncle bade me escort the field marshal to his manor in Port Isolde. And I will see that my associate joins you there. Very good, my lord. Port Isolde. Huh. An envoy. I'm not sure I'm the man to talk anyone round. I can barely convince my brother to take his medicine. <laughs> no. This is a job for someone with experience. Someone like Quinton. I hope I can convince him at least.
That'll do, girl. Quinton, I have a proposal for you. Do you now? Something tells me you'll be asking more of me than a cask of goat and gold. Go on then. Propose. You'd have me convince the chiefs and chamberlains of the realm that they should simply swallow their pride and do the one thing that has proved impossible for thousands of years. Was there anything else? Perhaps I can fetch you a meat pie as well. I know it's a lot to ask, but I can think of none better suited to the role. And you'd have me give up what little I have left to do it. I told you, Clive. The people of Lost Wing are my family, and I cannot abandon them. You'll have to find someone else. I'm sorry to hear that. So am I. <laughs> and why might that be? What he's asking? How is it any different to what you've done so far? They want you to speak for those who can't speak for themselves. That's what you do best. <laughs> if it's the vineyard you're worried about, we'll see that the grapes are picked and the tons filled. You know we will. It's not that. Then what is it? You said yourself we're family. Don't you trust us? You know that's not what I'm... Then what are you saying? That only we are worth saving? Why turn your back on everyone else? You convinced us we could build new lives for ourselves, and if you can do that, who's to say you couldn't convince the entire realm? A stirring argument. I fear that any rejoinder I make might fall somewhat flat by comparison. So you'll join us? Where do you need me? Field Marshal Havel will want to speak with you in person. He's currently in Port Isolde. I can arrange for a party of curse breakers to accompany you there. That would be very much appreciated. I hear the roads are far from safe these days. <laughs> Hopefully not for long. My uncle will want to know that his plan is taking shape. to the hideaway. Uncle, I bring good news. The field marshal has agreed to your plan. Ha! Of course he has. I didn't doubt you for a moment, dear boy. <laughs> Rutherford is accompanying him back to your manor in Port Isolde as we speak. They will await your return there. As will one other. One other? Who, exactly? Lord Havel was concerned that even if he could get the realm's armies to agree to an accord, he might not be as successful in convincing those with political power. He asked if I might have a solution. And I suggested a certain Imperial Lord Magistrate turned liberator. One of your co-conspirators? Master Quinton would probably call me one of his. But yes. Another outlaw, then. Just the thing we need to put these rotten politicos in their places. Good thinking, Clive. I'm glad you approve. The more the merrier, eh? Huh? Uncle. Assuming Havel and Quinton can solve our problem with the armies, you still haven't mentioned how we might manage the grain shortages. Oh, don't you worry, my boy. The Seven High Houses will be seeing to that. They have all agreed to make the most generous of donations. Oh, of course, it did take a little persuasion, but luckily I had some unexpected help. From who? Why, you, my boy. <laughs> Rumor has it that you rescued the Lady Ariane's head steward, Rockford, from a horde of bloodthirsty bandits. It was more of a handful. Well, the old battle axe was so pleased. She had a shipload of talents delivered to my private docks by the next new moon. 
and when the other houses saw the parsimonious old crone's purse strings finally loosen, they as good as tripped over themselves in the rush to follow suit. <laughs> I'm happy to hear it. Now, I must be getting back to the manor. Join us there at your earliest convenience, would you? Of course, Uncle. And how, pray tell, will we get that grain to the capital if the roads are still overrun with a cash egg? You'll find another bloody road. I only have so many men, and I'm not about to send them headlong into an ether flood. That is, unless you'd have them turn as well. Well, I'd certainly eat less. <laughs> Says the man with a belly bigger than a band of curls. <laughs> My soldiers actually need their rations. Without any food to keep them going, they'll be dead even before you've sent them on your fool's errand. <clears throat> if I may, gentlemen, perhaps I might suggest an alternative approach. Though supply routes are indeed disrupted, there is no shortage of ships. Indeed, they bob away in every bay from here to Randalar, awaiting a safe haven. Allow them to make port and fill their bellies full of grain. And once those who crowd the cities are fed, ferry the displaced back to the countryside to work the fallow fields. Ah, but I'm sure that you wish to continue your discussion. Forgive the interruption. Two such firm friends as yourselves need no help from the likes of me. Rutherford spoke fondly of the great bond between you. Us? Friends? I can't stand the man! <laughs> Clive, I'm beginning to question the quality of the company you keep. And what kind of company were you expecting him to keep? The man's a criminal! Criminal? How... How dare you! You are not fit to breathe the same air as this fine, upstanding young gentleman. Upstanding? He calls himself Sid the Bloody Outlaw! <laughs> Once more onto the breach. <sighs> Shall we begin again? What we seek here is not to create a new nation nor to claim the thrones of those that already exist. We wish simply to bring stability to the realm that mankind might weather the current storm. And to do that, we must convince those in power, the generals, the statesmen, the nobles, that our cause is just. There will be disagreements, yes. And I imagine some resistance, much resistance. But we cannot let that deter us. If we show them the path, Show them that we walk it ourselves, and I am confident they will follow. The fate of the world lies in my nephew's hands, but the well-being of her people lies in ours. And we must not squander the chance that Clive has given us. Uncle Byron, I... Now, with that settled, let's move on to the signing of the Accord. For what great moment in history hasn't been accompanied by a little ceremony? <clears throat> Citizens of Valisthea, I present to you the Triunity. Rutherford, Mike Will. Well, my boy. The stage is set. That it is. This is the role you were born for. Now I ask only that you trust in the talents of your supporting cast. We shall play our parts to the best of our abilities. That you might have the opportunity to shine. The realm needs its Sir Crandall. And there is no better Crandall than you, Clive. I uh, want you to keep this signed accord as proof of our faith in you. I will. Thank you, Uncle.
do you think that thing is? And how the hell is it going to do? trouble at all. Still. Clive, you're back. How'd you get on? Any luck? Any luck, you say? <laughs> Got it. Crystal's crack. Is this what I think it is? Where in the hell did you find it? It's a long story. Right there on the road to Eastpool. <laughs> Who'd have thought it? Everything up there's been abandoned for years. The empty cabin made for the perfect shelter. Though I fear my presence may have forced the poor creatures to look elsewhere. Don't blame yourself, Clive. The blight's right on Eastpool's doorstep. They'd have had to move on before long. Even if you hadn't have turned up. They'll find a new home. Trust me. After all, that's what us endangered animals do. Anyway, what matters is, you managed to nick us one of their quills before they could run off. And now all that's left is to fix it to the carving. I didn't know you could carve. <laughs> mm, reckon there's a lot you don't know about me. Like the fact I'm as good with a whittling knife as I am with a sword. And that bone ember gave me's a dream to work with. What did you say it was from again? An Avis? But it weren't your ravis, Sid. I slew one of my own at last. So all those long nights in the pit finally bore fruit. I'm proud of you, Ember. <laughs> Don't speak too soon. I ain't done my trial yet. There we go. Wow. Impressive. What do you think? I think if you ever hang up your scouting cap, you'll be able to make an honest living. Now will I. <laughs> I should go and see if Ed is awake. Give him my best. Huh, you can give it to yourself. Come on. While I admit I had my doubts at first, your man Quinton seems a reasonable sort. That and every moment he's talking instead of Havel, the better chance we'll have of setting things straight. You can trust in us, Clive, just as we trust in you. Osman, I found the flowers you were looking for. You did? I think I did. Indeed. My dear boy, thank you. You wanted to make Dion a gift of one, did you not? Shall I invite him to join us? Oh, uh, I don't... It's no trouble. I'll go and fetch him. Dion. Your Highness, would you do me the honor of accompanying me? No. It is time then. No. Only to the shelves. Our lawsman has something he'd like to give you. Master Harpocrates. No. I dare not show my face before him. Not after everything I have done. I have taken countless innocent lives. And ruined countless more. All because I was weak. 
I have sworn to atone for my crimes or die in the attempt. But were I to meet with him again, and see in his eyes what I have become, I fear that my resolve might falter. Then that is all the more reason to do it. Hmm. True. Test your resolve. Prove to yourself and to him how strong it truly is. You are right. I must, at the very least, offer him my gratitude. Very well, then. Take me to him. Follow me. hesitate to approach him. What must he think of me? You'd be surprised. to Harpocrates. Pray. Accept my apologies for leaving your tutelage before my studies were complete. Your lessons opened my mind to a world quite unlike the one I had imagined from within the gilded confines of the palace. And I shall be forever grateful for the efforts you made to enlighten me. Lift up your head, your highness. The deeds of youth require no apology. That you took the time to visit me says much about the man you have become. Now, there is something I would like to show you. Is that a wyvern tail? color is unfamiliar to me. Because it is unique to those found in the wild. Something in the harsh environment in which they grow lends them this striking hue. Their roots are indistinguishable from those of their hothouse cousins, but once they bloom, the difference is immediately apparent. In this flower, I see you, your highness. Its roots were the roots of a wyvern tail, with all that implies. But they do not define it, just as yours do not define you. Amen. I want you to have it, that it might remind you of this truth. Master Harpocrates. I would ask of you a service. Keep your gift until I have fulfilled my duty to the realm. For only then shall I be deserving of it. As you wish, Your Highness. I shall await your return. Stepmother didn't like him. <laughs> For reuniting me with memories I had thought long lost. I shall not forget this. Thank you, Clyde. 
alive. Were it not for you, I fear I might never have found the right moment to speak with him. Not to mention the wife and tales. I shall plant their seeds, that I might not disappoint his highness upon his return. I hope the soul in the hideaway is to their liking. Why, these flowers bloomed in the bleak, black wastes of Walud, and your Nigel's yard will suit them to a tea. When it comes to expressing one's gratitude, I find that words are seldom sufficient. Here. What's this? A Stolas quill. Or more precisely, my Stolas quill. Hmm. It is said that an owl's feathers are steeped in the wishes it hears over its long lifetime. All those words just waiting to pour out onto the page. So consider this my wish for you. That one day, you may put down your sword and pick up that pen. Well, when that day comes, I'll certainly have a lot to write about. Thank you, Harpocrates. You shall have pride of place in my chamber. Jeez, six thousand. It's a dangerous world out there. If 
Joshua was worried about Jill. I should go and speak with him. Kids behaving. Mid, tell me this is all you need. Oh, you make it sound like I asked you to save the world or something. Tell me this is all. You need. <laughs> it's most of what I need. After you left, I went over the figures again, and I realized I'd forgotten a one and a zero. <sighs> and and a cogwheel. <laughs> Just a tiny one. Though that's the problem. Gears that small are a bastard to make, and I may have lost the one Blackthorn spent a fortnight toiling over. Wait. The children. When they took apart your scales, uh, it was a tiny brass gear. Now that I think about it, I... They... Didn't use it... When we put the scales back together. The young'uns? But why would they... You know what? I don't want to know. I'll keep working on the model. You go and find that cog. Hmm. Okay. Did at all mentioned a new project? Sid! Is Mid still hiding from us? She wasn't hiding. She's fine. She's just busy working on her next project. A new invention? What is it? What is it? Is it an airship? I bet it's an airship! Do you think she'll let us help? That just so happens to be why I'm here. She needs something special, something only you three can provide. A brass gear. A tiny one. One that might fit on, say, a set of scales. Oh, the one you forgot! We remember! <laughs> we saved it, just in case. It's in the bag of bits. Since your lesson, we've been disassembling, then reassembling everything we can find. All the pieces that are left over, we keep under our beds, just in case. <laughs> That's <Yeah. laughs> good to know. Look, I found it. Is that all? Just the gear? We have more parts if Mid needs them. That's all for now. But I'll let Mid know about your board. <laughs> Just in case. Thanks, Sid. Well, did they have it? Yep. And a whole lot of other parts. <laughs> they did. And they kept it somewhere nice and safe. Will it work? Will it work? He's perfect! You're a genius, Clive. What exactly are you going to use it for? Only the most important job of all. The wings aren't going to move on their own. But with the right cog in the right place? Well, you just wait and see. Do I? <laughs> it's a prototype. Here goes nothing. Titan's tick. 
<laughs> it wasn't supposed to fly, was it? Of course it was supposed to fly. Wouldn't be much of an airship if it didn't. Honestly, these bloody engines are driving me mad. I'm so sure this would be the day she saw. The Mithril engine was made to make dreams come true. But maybe this is one dream the world's better off without. Show folk how to take flying. It won't be long till they're raining death down on each other. People will lose their homes. That's true. Children, their mums and their dads. Like I lost mine. I'm sorry. So am I, Clive. So am I. Sorry that I have to choose. Do I follow my head? Or do I follow my heart? Good question. The first time I stood on the deck of your ship, I felt the wind in my hair. It was like I was flying, but imagine how it would feel to actually do it. My dad always said there were two ways of living life. Chasing a dream or shuffling to your grave. Hmm. And he were right. Right about a lot of things. Not that I like to admit it. People need dreams to chase. Especially in a world like this. Right. When this is over, I'm going to take all my Mithril engines to Zemeckis and sling them over the edge. I won't have my dream end up turning into someone else's nightmare. But all that hard work... All that hard work will not be used for war, Jamie. <laughs> but it isn't like it'll be gone. Tell me, Clive, have you ever been on a treasure hunt? Not since Joshua and I were boys. Why do you ask? Because I'm going to bury the engine schematics and leave behind a little riddle telling people where to find them. Hmm. A really hard one. So that only the most dedicated dreamers will ever be able to work it out. <laughs> I can picture it now. Daft general squinting at the words with a gormless expression on his mug. Like that one, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. If I'm putting this engine at the end of a treasure hunt, I'll still need to make it a treasure worth hunting for. Won't be much of a prize if it couldn't even make a toy boat fly after all. <sighs> My dad always said, dream big. But it in the size of a dream that's important, is it, Clive? Only that it's a good one. And I reckon I've got a fair few good ones left in me. I'm sure you do. I do with your model. You spent a lot of time on it. We both did. What, that old thing? Not healthy to cling to your failures, Clive. But were you down, you know? Sound advice. Still, I suppose my prototypes will probably be worth a fair bit when I'm as famous as Bart's the Builder. <laughs> Seeing as you're always strapped for coin, I suppose I can give it to you. Just make sure you get a good price when you do come to part with it. I'd say that was up to you as much as me. All right, Clive. <sighs> hmm. 
Make a name for yourself. You better bloody I do and all. Enjoy it while you can, Clive. Imagine that, eh? <laughs> Till then, though. Be seeing you, Clive. If you went first, what with you being the head of the family and all? How can I help you, Clive? And no sooner have your wounds mended. Gav's nose. That's what I'm worried about. <laughs> I do. What I truly like. But teach her medicine. <sighs> Try to stay out of trouble. Greetings, Lord Marquis. His Grace and I. At first. It was my duty to him. Do not doubt it. Thank you, Yurte. May you return safely. May the Firebird's flame burn ever in your heart. Ah, me lords. How are you feeling? Well, thank you. <laughs> Is something wrong? Wrong? No, nothing like that. Uh, uh, what it is, is... Uh... Go on, please. It's beautiful. Did you <clears throat> make it? Uh -huh. We did. I... Uh, it's from all of us here at the hideaway. Your new family, like. It's a good luck charm. We may come up north when a bairn's on the way. I, I, I mean, a, a baby. To let them know that they're part of the family, too. Oh, I, I, ho I hope you like it. I... I don't know what to say. I thank you, my lords. For everything. If there's anything you need, just let us know. I will. Life. Fancy a swift off. I'm thirsty. I could be convinced. Oh. <laughs> 
Then you think you've had enough? No, we're celebrating. I'm gonna be a father. <laughs> <laughs> I think Edda might have something to say about that. Ah, you know what I mean. Bit of light in these dark times. It wasn't long after me tenth name day. My mum told us she was with child again. I was over the fucking moon. I was looking forward to having a little one to lord it over. What with me being the runt of the litter. I thought I'd finally have a chance to prove to the world that I could be a big brother. Imperials came the day she went into labor. Had myself a baby sister. And then I didn't. My whole family gone in a blink while I hid in the cellar like the spineless little arsehole I was. Great brother I turned out to be. I'll never be a leader. And I'll never be a hero. I'm just a daft little dog who comes running when his master calls. I'll never be like you, or Sid, or Jill, or even Toggle. Have you finished? Maybe. Do you know why you're our best scout? Yeah. Because you don't need anyone to hold your hand. Without your resourcefulness, your courage, your determination, I don't know where we'd be. Maybe hanging off a cliff like, uh... That was only the once. <laughs> exactly. You learned from it. <clears throat> and here you are after founder knows how many missions stronger for everyone. <laughs> and let's not forget Rosalith. Who was it who freed me from the dungeon? Who was it who ran to Jill's rescue? That would be me. <laughs> because you're our brother, Gav. My brother. <sighs> Your brother. Which means, when the time comes, I get your room and your sword. had one too many. <laughs> you may have had ten too many. I said I was thirsty. Better get back to work anyway. After I walk this off. Uh, Clive? What is it? Thanks for, you know, No. Hmm. Oh, one of these days, 
One of these days, I swear, it's gonna be me who drinks you under the table. If by under the table you mean retching on my boots half the night, <laughs> I reckon one of those days was yesterday. Ha ha, you think you're so funny. But just wait till we crack open the bottle I left in your chambers. That stuff's strong enough to burn the horns of a behemoth. Sounds like I'll be needing some new boots. <laughs> Buddy, everything's clear, right? Oh, yeah, thanks, buddy. Oh, I wasn't expecting you back. So hey, last one. You earned this. <laughs> Again, I may have more for ya. Fancy a look at the list, do you? Anything catch your eye? Always something in there. Yeah, it's just Joshua left. Oh, Oops. Little word. Time to take a step back. And if it weren't for Sid, I know you'll do right by us, Clive. What will it be today? Truth is but a matter of belief. Alas. Well, Clive. Naturally. I shall... How may I help you today? Here's the latest information I have. One must understand one's place in the world. last mission or side quest with Joshua.
Joshua. I read your message. You're right. Jill is different. I don't think I'd realized how different, but since we returned from Drake's spine, I felt it more and more. I suppose it's not hard to imagine why. She doesn't think she belongs anymore. And that's why we need to remind her she is still one of us. To let her know that we still need her. Now more than ever. That you still need her. But how to do that? When last we were truly close, we were but children. Of course. Do you remember the time we accompanied Father on his annual tour of the Duchy? And Jill and I broke from the procession to ride up Man's Hill. To see the snow daisies, I remember. It was the first time Father had allowed us to join him. And when he realized you were missing, he had the entire retinue down to the pot boys combing the countryside. In the rain. A thunderstorm forced us to take refuge in a grove of oaks before we'd even made it halfway there. It was the Lord Commander who finally found us, and needless to say, he was none too pleased. Then it seems you and Jill have unfinished business. What do you say? Man's Hill. It's not that far. Oh, true. Though I suspect it is also much changed. Little in southern Rosaria remains as it was when we were children. You're saying I should go and scout the area for bandits? I'm saying we should first go and see if there are actually still any snow daisies left. <laughs> what would you do without me, Clive? I can't say my travels ever took me back to Man's Hill. I'm curious to see how it has fed. Where is Jill? I wonder if she's in the infirmary. Do you think they'll come back? mentioned a new project yet. There's a new mother. Passing over it won't see the hens fed. One moment you think you've freed the realm from her fate. The next, a darker one rears up to replace it. What awaits us when we finally attain release? True freedom? Or something else entirely?
my little darlings. You will. Maybe Karen has seen ourselves haven't gone bad. First the skies, then the crystal. What next? The oven. Have a moment. Of course. Always. I wanted to give you something. Oh. Is this? I stitched it from the cloth you gave Hortense. The piece she said you liked best. I told her I used to enjoy needlework, but I didn't think she'd remember. It's beautiful, Jill. You didn't have to. When I was very little, I recall my mother telling me that young ladies of the court would give knights ribbons from their hair before they went off to war. I still wear mine, so I made you this instead. Black is the color of eternity. It cannot be stained. It cannot be sullied. It is unchanging, unwavering, just like your resolve. And mine. Our resolve. May it never diminish. And may it ever bring you back to me. I will always, always be here. Thank you, Jill. <laughs> that's awesome. So that's the last piece in it's the wall. It's not time yet, is it? Somewhere in the back of my mind. I know. Thank you. And so for now. Amen. Right. that section. <laughs> Here be Ross Fields. Oh no. It's desolate. This is the place, but I'm sorry, Clive. There's no weapon spared. What do we do now? We keep looking. Man's Hill cannot be the only place where snow daisies grow. Perhaps, but it's the only place I know of. You of. Then why not ask someone who might know of another? Hippocrates. Someone at the backyard. To the hideaway, then. <laughs> the backyard. Oh, it's just there. Let's hope one of the gardeners knows where to find snow daisies. I think the wall is complete now, though. Still missing two. Hmm, so 
Everybody's giving thanks. you down from the heavens, Sid. I need your advice. Joshua and I are looking for a place where snow daisies grow. Preferably in abundance. Snow daisies. Then you'll want somewhere not too hot and not too cold. And where the winds are strong enough to carry the seeds. Uh, I reckon Man's Hill would be a good place to start. <laughs> there in the Royal Meadows, perhaps? Both have similar climbs and the right elevation. If the Blight hasn't claimed them yet. Right. Thank you. Did you learn where we might find our flowers? The gardener here mentioned the Royal Meadows in Sambrek. Ah, oh, the fields beyond Northridge. Well, if that's the case, then Yote was right. I recall that she kept the record of our travels, you see. So I asked her if she'd perhaps noted anywhere that snow daisies grew, and she mentioned Oilerfeist Bay. Whose shores border the meadows. Off we go then. Yep, nothing like two brothers looking for flowers. The winds that blow across the royal meadows from Oilerfeist Bay are strong indeed. Strong enough for snow daisies, it seems. This is the last one. Only 
one way to find out. than I expected. But found her. It was worth it. They're beautiful. Do you think Jill will like them? She'll love them. Come on. Let's go. So we're bringing her back here, or...? <laughs> it appears my work is done. The rest, as they say, is up to you. Ah. Well, you and the skies. We wouldn't want another thunderstorm now, would we? Stand ready to leave for Origin at your word. May Grieger go with us and see us safely home. Shoes in my room. <laughs> the first the skies, then the crystal. Jill, there's something I'd like to show you. <laughs> there is. And where might this something be? It's uh, not here. Now, I know this is sudden, but how would you fancy a trip to Oriflam? <laughs> oh. It's beautiful too, with the castle being there. 
There are so many. <laughs> this is what you wanted to show me. <laughs> I don't know what to say. You don't need to say anything. The smile on your face is enough. We've been worried about you. Joshua and I. Do you remember when I took you to Man's Hill? Or... <laughs> Try to. How could I forget? You saw me crying and thought a change of scenery might lift my spirits. In the end, it earned me a nasty cough and a stern scolding from your mother. But I felt wonderful nonetheless. I'm sorry. I had no idea what I was getting us both into. But I couldn't bear to see you like that. Before we left, my chambermaid told me she'd overheard your mother talking about my marriage prospects with some of the noblewomen at court. They were debating whether it would be more profitable to marry me off to one of the high houses instead of saving me for the ducal line. No one thought to ask me what I wanted. I was nothing to them. A pawn at best. I felt so trapped. So lonely. I didn't know. But I wasn't alone. You were there. <laughs> Your hand and mine as we ran for those oaks. And I knew then, no matter what happened, I would be all right. I'll never forget that feeling. Hold her hand again, <clears throat> bruh. <clears throat> Before we broke camp, the morning after the storm, do you know what I did? No. What? I slipped away from my governess to climb the tour. And from there I saw a sea of petals, all reaching for the sun. And I realized... No matter how terrible the night, dawn would always come. That you, that you would always come for me. And you have, again and again. Where do you see us? <laughs> when all this is over? I don't know. Not here, though. I think I've outgrown the twins. After everything we've been through, the realm just seems so small. I'll need some space to spread my wings. Hmm. That's what you'll have. And I'll stop at nothing to see that you do. Yeah, buddy boy. good at garlands, but it'll have to do. I'll treasure it forever. Thank you, Clive, for this, the flowers, everything. It's exactly what I needed. You are mine. 
treasure. Marry her. <laughs> we should probably be getting back. I expect the others are wondering where we are. You're right. There's still much to do. And we'll do it together. Alright guys, that's going to do it for this episode. Thanks again for joining. Uh, the next one we're going to get back into the main quest. Thanks again, and if you like this video, please hit the like button, share, and subscribe. Peace.